I'm here today with the EV Power. It's a 48 amp electric vehicle charger from EVCO. I'm gonna offer my quick charge review to help you decide if it's the right electric vehicle charger for you. Welcome to the very first of a new series that I'm offering here on State of Charge called Quick Charge. It's a condensed version of my electric vehicle charger reviews. If you follow this site, you know I do very comprehensive deep dive reviews of electric vehicle charging equipment. Sometimes they videos as, as long as an hour long. Some of my followers have had, Tom, you know, I really love your reviews, but is there any way you can make them shorter? So what I'm gonna do from now on is offer my full reviews as I've always done, but then also offer what I call a quick charge review, which is basically that review condensed in 10 minutes or less. And that's what we're gonna do here today with the EVCO. With that said, let's jump to the review. We're gonna start off with taking a look at what comes in the box. So let's see what we have here. We've got the body of the unit, cable, the J1772 connector, which is a good robust connector. I like this connector. And it comes with a rubberized cap for the front, which is super tight, I noticed. And that's to protect the pins if you're not holstering it in the connector holster. And it comes with a NEMA 1450 plug attached to it. Out of the box, it's a 40 amp charger. It's set internally to only deliver 40 amps because it's on a uh, NEMA 1450 plug and you can only uh, deliver uh, 40 amps through a NEMA 1450 outlet continuous. If you want this to deliver the 48 amps, you need to directly hardwire it. We'll get into that a little later. Hit this is the connector holster. It's a remote connector holster, so you can install this wherever you'd like in the garage. It doesn't have to be right next to the unit. This is the installation guide and sort of an owner's manual. On the back there, you'll notice there's the QR codes to scan to uh, download the app because this is a Wi-Fi connected charger and it comes with an app. These are the two wall mounting templates. One is for the connector holster, one is for the unit itself. And uh, it basically shows you where you drill your holes. Once you do that, it gives you the anchors. It gives you nine anchors, one extra. You only need eight four for the connector holster, four for the charger. It also gives you one extra security screw. These screws are used to attach the mounting template to the, both the charger and also the connector holster. Let me unscrew this one here. And this is how the connector holster attaches to the wall. You mount the bracket to the wall and this just kind of hangs on it and then goes like that. And then you put the one screw on the bottom. The charger is basically the same. Let me remove these two screws. So the charger has a wall mounting bracket here. Here's the bracket. This goes up on the wall and then the charger basically hangs on it. And then this slides in and you put one screw on this side and one screw on this side and that's it. And you plug it in. If you're using it as a plug-in unit, your installation's complete. Let's take a look at what it looks like once it's on the wall. Before we jump into the review, let's take a look at the EV Power's key features. The unit costs $399. It's 9.45 inches wide by 9.45 inches high by 4 inches deep. It's a 48 amp charger that can deliver up to 11.5 kilowatt to your electric vehicle. It has a 25 foot long cable. Comes with the J1772 connector. It's not available with the J3400 NAX connector yet. It's IP66 rated enclosure is equal to NEMA 4 rating. Its operating temperature is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. It's ETL certified, which is the UL equivalent. It is Energy Star rated. It comes with a two-year warranty, but you can purchase an additional one-year warranty for $100 and is made in China. The EV Power passed all of my tests. The first test was the automatic restart test in which we plug in an electric vehicle, we allow it to start charging, then I shut off the circuit breaker in my basement that powers the charger. I wait about a minute, turn it back on. What I wanna make sure is that the charger re-engages the vehicle and starts charging it again. That's to simulate if you had a temporary power outage overnight. Some of the electric vehicle chargers we've tested don't do that. They remain in a fault state. 
The EV power passed it, re-engaged the vehicle, and continued charging it once power was restored. Next up was the extreme heat test. In that test, I baked the units for two hours at 120 degrees under a heat lamp. And I then plug in an electric vehicle and I let it charge for two hours while keeping the heat lamp on the charger. It's to simulate if the charger was mounted outside in an area that gets really hot, like in Arizona, for instance. And uh, the unit passed the test to continue delivering the full nine kilowatts to my electric vehicle for two hours while the surface temperature on the charger got up to almost 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but it still continued to deliver the power without a problem. So it passed that test. And finally, we did our cold weather testing, including cable deep freeze test, the frozen connector drop test, and also the frozen unit power delivery test. It passed all three of those tests. It didn't get an excellent score on the cable deep freeze test. The cable performed okay, I'd say about average. So we didn't give it any extra points when we did our scoring at the end on the charger rater, but it passed the test and we would recommend this unit if you were gonna mount it outside in a cold weather area. It's also a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. You have to download the app from EVCO, pair it with your charger, and then you can set schedules, view the uh, charging information, like the power delivery to the car, your line voltage and amperage. You can actually lower the output uh, to the vehicle within the app. You can never exceed what the internal dip switch is set at though. You can only lower the power. You can also uh, authorize notifications from the app if you wanna get notified on different charging events. Uh, you could view data. Uh, the, from individual charging sessions to weekly totals, monthly totals, and three-month totals. And you could view not only the power delivered to the vehicle, but also your cost to charging in all of those categories, as long as you populate the app with your local electricity rates. Uh, you could set up three different schedules for uh, time-of-use charging plans, and you could set an individual uh, per kilowatt hour cost to each one of those three schedules because sometimes people pay different amounts with different charging schedules. So overall, I found the app to be okay. Um, I think that it could be reorganized and uh, optimized, made a little bit better, but it does contain a lot of information in there and pretty much all that you need from an electric vehicle charging app. State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at Qmerit install it. The unit has a long 25 foot cable, which is the longest that it's allowed by code. Really nice, robust connector, very well built, strong connector. Um, comparing this to some of the other connectors that I've reviewed here, it's really kind of at the top of the list. It's in my top five connectors for sure. Very well made, good rubberized grip and a metal tab on the top. Uh, most of the time these are plastic and they're more prone to breaking. Uh, this is solid metal, so this is gonna last a long time. It's got a remote connector holster with the lip on the top where you can uh, hang the cable and uh, manage it without it falling off. The unit's a relatively compact size. I think it's 9.34 inches by 9.34 inches by four inches off the wall. And it comes with a long cable for you to plug into uh, the NEMA 1450 outlet. Uh, this is much longer than normal. This is over three feet long. Most of the chargers come with about a 12 inch cable. So that allows you to mount the unit. And it doesn't have to be right next to your outlet. Out of the box, it comes with a uh, NEMA 1450 outlet, so the internal uh, power output is set at 40 amps. However, this is a 48 amp charger, so you can hardwire it and then select 48 amp power delivery. You do that inside the unit with a dip switch. You have to open up the unit and change the dip switch and then hardwire it in order to be able to deliver 48 amps if, you, if you'd like that. And I encourage all my followers to have a, a licensed electrician do that for you. They need to torque every connection to the right torque amount. And uh, you know, if you ever have any problems, you know it's been done by a certified licensed electrician, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it seems like a simple thing, but I urge my followers not to do that themselves. As for my ratings, the unit scored the highest on our charger rater that any unit has ever scored. It got 98 points. When we translate that to a five-star rating, it got 4.9 stars out of five. 
I then offer my own personal score and average them in. I gave the unit 4.2 stars out of five, which is very high for my own personal ratings, not quite as high as the charger rater gave it, but that gave it the final score of 4.55 stars out of five, one of the highest rated units that we've ever tested here. Uh, it's definitely a good unit and it's gonna be added to our recommended charger list. I think with a few minor tweaks, it can be an outstanding unit, but even as it is out of the box now for only $399, it's a very good charger at a very good price.